Welcome to another episode of Behind the Science on Location. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. Nothing screams summer like a juicy slice of watermelon. Watermelon is known for having vitamins and minerals, such as potassium and vitamin C, and is filled with water, which is great for hydration. But could watermelon also help improve my cardiovascular health? That would be amazing! In this episode of Behind the Science, let's take a trip to a lab at the University of Alabama to see why watermelon is at the heart of the work they're doing on bioactive compounds. So I made it! I'm here at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa visiting Christy Crow White and I know exactly where to find her so let's go and see all the cool science she's doing in her lab. Hi Christy, I thought I could find you in here. Of course, I'm always in the lab. So I happen to love watermelon, it's one of my favorite fruits and I was going through and reading some of your manuscripts on watermelon and I have to ask you, why are you studying watermelon? And it always is overlooked, but it's a major superfood. It's not just water and vitamin C. Uh, watermelon has six bioactive compounds that are cardioprotective, so improving your heart health and ultimately reducing your risk for cardiovascular disease. Well, that sounds pretty great. So as I look around, I notice that you have a lot of whiteboards, and I happen to love whiteboards too. So maybe we could take a look at the study through a whiteboard. Let's do. We love our whiteboards. Okay, Jen, so those six bioactive compounds that I talked about, two are amino acids. Citrulline is converted into arginine, and arginine gives us the vasodilation we need for our blood vessels to expand and to perfuse to our tissues. And then, amazingly, watermelon doesn't just have these cardioprotective properties of vasodilation improvement. These other four compounds are really potent antioxidants and anti-inflammatory agents. And you might be thinking, okay, what does inflammation and oxidative stress have to do with cardiovascular disease? Actually, you can think of inflammation and oxidative stress as the back pressure on the vascular system, kind of forcing our vessels to not expand to the level that they need to. So by providing these six active compounds, the synergy to reduce endothelial dependent vasodilation and arterial stiffness ultimately lowers your risk for cardiovascular disease. All right, Christy, you have sold me on watermelon, so I am now gonna up my consumption of watermelon in my household. You should, it's a bioactive superfood. You can have it in the food form or you can have it in the juice form. And bonus, if you do purchase it in the juice form, you have a little bit more bioavailable lycopene just based on the heat processing of the juice itself. So it's a win-win. You can have the food or the juice and you have a cardioprotective superfood. Well, that's amazing. So how soon after I drink the juice or eat the watermelon will I start to see these effects? I'm so glad you asked. We just finished an acute study with postmenopausal women who came in fasted. Um, we looked at vascular measures before drinking the juice and then two hours after drinking the juice. I want to show those to you. Let's take a look at that data. Look at these acute effects on watermelon on vascular function. Flomiated dilation is basically your blood vessel's ability to dilate, and that's a direct result of nitric oxide. So the amino acids in watermelon juice two hours after consumption resulted in a 4% increase in your blood vessel's ability to dilate. That's clinically relevant and clinically meaningful. We also can see on the right with systolic blood pressure, while it did decrease, it wasn't significant. However, taken together, watermelon can be beneficial in an acute setting to improve your cardiovascular function. So how does LCMS fit into the work you're doing? Actually, I have a whiteboard, a real whiteboard. Let me show you. So here we have on the left, PDA, so photodiode array detector. Yep. And with amino acids being so similar in structure, they're gonna co-elute and I can't separate and quantitate. So based on MS, the use of mass, I can separate citrulline and arginine and I need to know the difference between the two for the kinetic assessment and how that influences cardiovascular health. So my guess is you have some data associated with this work. We do. So let's go to my whiteboard. Let's do. So from this chromatography data, you can see we got clear separation of arginine and citrulline, which will allow for quantitative assessment of the two amino acids in serum. All this talk of watermelon has got me kind of hungry. I don't have any food, but you know I'll have some watermelon juice somewhere. Want to go find some? Let's go. Let's do it. I've always loved watermelon, but this work has given me even more excuses to not only consume the fruit, but to start to drink the juice. The fact that LCMS provides the ability to see and monitor these critical bioactive compounds is a game changer. If you'd like to learn more about this work and to make sure you find out the results of their long-term study, check out the link below. And join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science on Location.